This is a Tinder story. We've heard these before, but this one, it's got out of hand. Okay, so we meet at the bar. She wants to meet at the bar. I get there. She goes, hey, I'll introduce you to all my friends. This is how she introduces me to the table. She goes, hey, guys, this is Brett from Tinder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey man, it's uh, 8.48. Thanks for joining us this morning. Angelo Tsaroukas in the studio with us. He's from Montreal. You're living in Los Angeles. I'm living in Los Angeles. Yeah. My home. yeah, Angelo, haven't worked with him before. Uh, looking forward to, obviously. Everyone's got a different style. It's good to see new stuff. Uh, he's, I guess, Russell Peters' main opener. So he's doing something right. I'm not one of these guys who does much networking with the headliner, though. I'm not, like, asking what shows they can get me on. Uh, in the States or LA or wherever they live. So that's not my style. I, it does happen though, I do see it. As for knowing Rick, that's huge. I'm going through a cleanse right now, Terry. Yeah, good for you. What, what, I'm, what I'm cleanse? I'm going through a cleanse. Hot dog cleanse? cleanse? <laughs> no, I haven't had a cigar in a week or any carbs. I'm off carbs and I'm off cigars. I'm on edge. But the comedy's really good now because I'm talking about this. Cause, you know, comedians, we have addictive personalities. Yeah. Knowing Rick now, winning that competition, getting, I guess, on his radar is big because it's my goal to work in clubs. I don't care about these underground bar shows and stuff. People say, oh, you got to do all the shows. It makes you a better comic, but I want to be a better comic that gets paid, right? Here I am on my way for a whole week of paid work at a beautiful club, the comic strip. The headliners say it's like the best club of all time, but here's the thing. I win this competition, funniest person with a day job, I come home the next day back to Calgary and I get fired, okay? So I win funniest person with a day job and then 12 hours later I lose my day job. And here's my, uh, here's my reward, I get to go to Edmonton, play a week at the comic strip, but I also get to play a week as a homeless man because they don't set you up with any digs, no hotel, no condo, I gotta stay with another comedian. You'll never uh, sell got, any records to gluten-free well, people. You know, it's funny because, you know, when you do comedy, you always talk, I, and I've lost weight. I'm down since uh, two years ago. I'm down 118 pounds. Yeah. I don't know. I get my confidence uh, in chunks a little bit more and more as I go. As for goals, uh, one step at a time, one day at a time. I don't even think about moving to another city yet. I want to, I guess my short-term goal is become a somebody here before... I go somewhere else. So at least when I'm in LA, Toronto, Vancouver, whatever it is, I'm established. I got, you know, I'm a headliner. I'm not starting from the bottom, I guess. Do that here. Well, Tsarukas, he's your headliner at the comic strip. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so I've just been, I'm leaving on Wednesday. I got to fly out of town and I just wanted to, one, just get a few things, and my Crohn's has been acting up a little bit. When I was first diagnosed with Crohn's, um, I didn't let it stop me, and I continued to perform. Uh, if anything, I started performing more, going from 10 weeks a year to 20 weeks a year to 30 weeks a year, all the way up to about 40 plus weeks a year on the road. And it wasn't until um, early 2000s where I had such a bad bout that it hospitalized me for two months. So uh, my wife and I made a very uh, difficult decision at the time to uh, for me to get off the road. I met with them all and um, they were kind enough to let me uh, open up the club there, the first club that we opened, the comic strip, and then followed obviously by the House of Comedy in uh, Minnesota and the House of Comedy in Arizona. Um, but it was uh, probably the most difficult choice of my life to give up performing, which was my true love. It's what I've been doing since I'm 12 years old, starting as a magician, then becoming a comedian at 15, then doing TV and giving it all up to, uh, to become what I often hated at many clubs, the club owner. I mean, if it weren't for my crones, I would probably not be owning comedy clubs. And the other thing I wanted to add, this one's frightening me a little, and I don't know if this is from years of drug abuse from medication, you know, prescription drugs, and obviously my recreational fun of the 80s and 90s, but um, I'm a little nervous about this. I'm actually a lot nervous about this. I, my recall is, I don't mean my immediate recall, I have no memories. In the last little while, I was talking to a headliner friend of mine, um, and he's reminded me of shows we did with so-and-so, and this incident happened, and all. 
and I'm listening to these stories like it's the first time I'm hearing it. Like, it's not even triggering flashbacks. We watch Jeopardy, I can answer questions, I can answer trivia, but I don't remember my own goddamn life. Uh, folks, uh, Rick Bronson here from the comic strip, West Edmonton Mall, Bourbon Street. Um, I am here with this week's lineup. What was your desire? Was it to be the actor? Or, I mean, because you're still well, doing a ton of stand-up dates. Lo I, lo lots of stand-up dates. And for me, the challenge, and you know this, Rick, the challenge of stand-up is getting up in front of a crowd anywhere. And I have literally worked everywhere. Like this year, I've been in Dubai, Qatar, yeah. London, Manchester, Edmonton, Phoenix. doesn't matter. But the thing is, is that most the comics who are good comics don't care where the stage is. They just want to be on it. And I have learned that. And now with Russell having such a global audience, doing comedy is great because it's an immediate interaction with yeah. the audience. You, immediate feedback. You know yeah. whether you know whether you're good, you're or, good or, or, not. or you're crappy. It's, or, or you know when to turn it up and turn it down. As a comic, it's like always <clears throat> there's certain rooms that you want to play at and this is definitely yeah, I, definitely I, one I, of them i may be a tad narcissistic but we really do feel that we are the a room of the country we like and we try to operate that way we no really no do. it is it so really brett is. tell me something you're hearing all this stuff that angelo has done here man and uh what are you thinking yourself what what how do you, are you right now just thinking, God, I got a gig in Red Deer tomorrow? Or are you saying to yourself? Yeah, we have so much in common. <laughs> Traveling the world, B2, Lethbridge, Ashcroft, yeah, Hendon, LA, Lethbridge, Alberta. Saskatoon, you know, um, TV. We do the same things. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Folks, this is a show you don't want to miss this weekend and uh, and meet the boys. And after the show, uh, you know, these are the type of guys that are always happy to uh, shake hands, take a few photos. Folks, thanks for checking in. Boys, appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. I don't have a single memory. Did my grandfather have dementia or did he have uh, al Alzheimer's? He, I gotta no, call my mother. They were mother. testing him for what prescription drugs do. Should be entertaining in 10 years. I'm glad you think this is so funny. This is scaring the shit out of me. What business are we in? 1851. Yeah. yeah. That's supportive, thank you. Go back to work, you two. What? I have no clue then. The other one was 23. No, here it is. I didn't get anything. For two secs. What did you do? I didn't do anything. I went to go get my uh, brain tested. I told the Dr. Vector that I can't, shut up. Is this a personal call? No. Because this is business. <laughs> I told him that I can't, uh, I have no memory recall. Right? Did Zadie and have dementia or uh, early onset Alzheimer's? What did he have? No. Neeraj thinks that could be part of it, but he thinks a bigger part of it for me was my actual Ill having a chronic disease, being short of iron, being short of B12, things of that nature, all affect um, the ability for the brain to function. So what are they doing for you? Uh, he did a short test with me today. He's sending Lobotomy. me for blood work, <laughs> and then I yeah. might. And then I don't know what the next step is. It involves deeper branches of testing. But all my immediate faculties tested right. fine. Right. It's your long-term memory or your short-term memory? It's mostly long-term. Like I don't. I don't remember the birth of my son. I know I was there, but I can't picture it. <laughs> <laughs> so what the fuck did you guys do, do to it? You genetically fucked your children. Sheila, they actually want to test you now. No, she remembers everything, and she's the, she's the reason we're all ill. And I'm going to be really pissed off if my Crohn's not only screwed up my, li my uh, lifestyle, but also my brain. Sheila, Sheila, it's not all bad, because he's not remembering any of his old material anyway. <laughs> You're telling me us to rape. Maybe that's a great Your thing. mother's <laughs> laughing at you. Anyway, you know what, Rick? I would speak with Adam because both of you seem to have the same symptoms. Definitely speak to Adam. I will. His memory is, is really bad, too. I will. Okay, Maybe they'll forget okay. okay thank you. Bye. That's what the uh, refund looks like when you get it back. It's nice. Really good. I like that a lot. Can that page be modified? Well, I mean,
mean, we're 40 minutes away from the show. Uh, people still really aren't in the audience yet, so that kind of dictates what material I go with. This is all just, uh, I don't write it out word for word. It's all just one uh, word headings, and I just kind of go over that order in my head. Kind of get an order that I would like, and then, uh, but you know, you don't necessarily stick to that. You uh, sometimes have to deviate. But again, as soon as I look at that crowd, I'll know certain bits like, like, okay, if it's an old crowd, I'm not talking about Instagram. I'm not talking about, um, you know, young stuff like that. So I gotta do more 80s material if it's older. But if I see some young people in the crowd, then I know I can, certain bits will fly. Pre-show dips. It's important to get a nice pom-pom before you get on stage, especially when wearing a shirt like this. No one does this. No one does this. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, I'm not too uh, specific or too intricate with my uh, notes. It's mainly just headlines, just one-word headlines of what the joke is about. Just making sure that the order is in a way that I can segue out of a joke into another. You know, so that they're not on their own, it kind of seems like a thematic chunk together. So that's why I'll have like, like bra I'll put like a bracket around some of my notes because these all go together, those all go together, these all go together. And then I've decided, okay, I'm gonna go with these one first, second, and then third. They're chunks. So it'd be nice if it was all one chunk, but sadly uh, I gotta find a way to weave it in. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, your next act coming to the stage, as I mentioned off the top. He was our winner this year of Edmonton's Funniest Person with a Day Job. Ladies and gentlemen, show your love, the very funny and talented Mr. Brett Forte. Okay, one more. There's this new animal. <laughs> just discovered, okay, uh, it's called the immortal jellyfish. It gets its name because when confronted with danger in the sea, it can actually multiply into up to a hundred identical versions of itself. This is a real animal that we have, this is, this is real. So yeah, you think you're one-on-one -on -one with this jellyfish, you turn away for a second, it's one on a hundred. Yeah, it's like fighting a Lebanese guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, you guys. It's just racist. That's just culturally accurate. Fighting a Lebanese okay. guy. <laughs> they appear in like a cloud of hookah smoke. <laughs> bro, bro, wallah, bro, 100, let's go, bro. <laughs> They do the thriller walk. I don't know why. They... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you've been a lot of fun. I'm Brett Forte. I'm gonna... Thanks. Don't smoke cigars, it's better. Fuck it, I love cigars. Fuck it, I love carbohydrates. Fuck it, I love women. Fuck it. I'm fucking no cigars, no carbohydrates, married. Like, fuck, I'm so happy to be alive. I'm just so happy about this. How do you feel, Angelo? Like I'm gonna fucking kill somebody. It's good to laugh, it's good to release endorphins. Whoever brought their partner to the show tonight, they're gonna get some. You know why, guys? Girls like to laugh, and when girls laugh, they release endorphins. It goes to all their horny parts. So remember, guys, when you score after the show, I get the assist, all right? That's right. That's right. Thanks a lot, Evan, and have a good night. Thank you. Kid, Brett. I like him. He's a, he's a, good, he's kid. a good kid. You know, <laughs> I like him and I fucking hate him at the same time. Because he's funny and he's good looking, so he's gonna have a career. Well, he's brash so at we first. have to be funny. Good looks went away a long time ago. Except for some checks. They like fat guys. How's uh shows last night? Decent? None of your business. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's rude. It was that well, eh? I was, I was a dick with the crowd work. It felt good. I went <laughs> I went a little bit further than usual, and uh, I got away with it. It was What's good. What's further than usual? 
I told some stepdad that he's like, he's ruined an entire family. <laughs> <laughs> I was an asshole. I kind of went in too deep, but yeah. uh, I got away with it. Yeah, it was good though. It reminds me, you know, when I see, when I see guys like you or even like Brett and people ask, they say, how come you bring, you give new guys? Because everybody thinks that most comedians are all, we're all buddies and there's camaraderie. It's bullshit because we're not. A lot of guys are fucking assholes. They won't help you. But the reason I think it's good uh, is because people did it for me. And I think you, you need to pass it on a bit. Like Russell's brought me on his world tour. Yeah. Vince Vaughn's world tour. I toured with Tom Jones. Even Roseanne Barr, the fucking bitch, until she fired me after I was funnier than her one show. Your buddy. And then told me on Lost Comic Standing, I don't get your act. What do you want your you? coffee? Um, the plan tonight, though, is to have such a good set that next time they can't refuse the condo, okay? They're gonna put my name on the fucking mortgage this time. All right, I'm gonna own that place and you can stay with me, okay? Okay, I'll hold you to it. All right. Next time I'm booked, I think, in October or November. Condo. Condo. trip over land, but Jeannie comes out and he grants you one wish. He says, I grant you one wish. What would your wish be? And I was like, shit. You really want to know? You want me to be brutally honest? She's like, yeah. I said, okay. I wish your kids were mine. And she started crying. She started sobbing. She's like, I love you so much. I love you. Why are you so sweet? Why would you say it? I said, that way I could beat the shit out of him. That's why. <laughs> There is a woman whose go-to story, <laughs> her number one tale uh, at every work function, at every barbecue is that, yeah, she fucked the great one. <laughs> but in reality, she fucked the Leon's delivery driver. <laughs> Jeffrey! Come on in, honey, are you hungry? I made mac and cheese. Yeah, my Greek mom coming out of the house, curlers in her hair, smoking a cigarette, wearing a robe, bunny slippers missing an ear, holding a broom, looking like fucking Braveheart, huh? It's pretty amazing. Um, humor is so powerful, man. And, uh, and I know a thing or two about this. Um, uh, living with Crohn's disease, I truly do believe that laughter is the best medicine. And there's something to be said about the power uh, of laughter and what it does um, and, and how it makes people feel. And I mean, I'm st still to this day, I get as much joy um, watching the audience react, posting up on the wall beside the stage and looking back at the audience and not even watching the comic. Tonight, and tonight was a great example because this was a really good crowd tonight. Well, the Greek lady who I talked to, she yeah. was here last year to see you. Yes, yeah. Her parents are from the same village. Village! Your parents in Greece. are from in Greece. Is that who you were talking to when I walked by? All I overheard you say was the only people who resisted the Nazis were the English and, and the, the Greeks. Greeks. Well, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I'll tell you this. The, uh, uh, her husband's British. So uh, they're going to Greece. They just told me they're going to Greece. And I said, you know what's funny? In World War II, uh, the only resistance when you walked in, Brett walks in, I go, was the, was the English and the Greeks. And that's what I checked. And this, out. Was history, and this is where good comics that have got to know their history, you got to have a vast knowledge. I know some comics, they try to be too clever. And what happens, you're, 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 you're over talking the audience, you're too clever. Yeah. Or try to be too smart. Which I'm not saying be stupid, we're not stupid, but when you're throwing shit at them, you know, did you know that an Eastern Island statue, who gives a fuck? But I think you know, what happens... World War II, the only two countries to... <laughs> that wow. is true. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, but, the kid but, hits him with a callback, but, a reverse callback. I, I didn't do that on stage, did I? 
No, no, you just... Right? You're being a little fucking prick yeah, now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, 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 you heard me talking to the Greek woman in reverse hospital. What did you think of the kid tonight? Up until what he just said? <laughs> up, yeah, up until now. He's funny. You're funny. Appreciate you're funny. It. I'll say that. You're funny. So what do you, I'll, I'll what do you think what you were telling me earlier? The July one? Uh, the July one? Ju uh, well, I, I, I don't know if I, I, I... We do a show every year in... Um, I don't want your head to get any more swollen than it is yeah. here. Yeah, you yeah. cocky little arrogant yeah. two-year. Cocky, yeah. good-looking <laughs> fucking Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Looking. I'm going to fuck yeah. all the chicks on the show, guy. Anyway, That's no, I'll get it. Listen, yeah. uh, Brett, we do a show every year. It's a fun show, but it's become a really popular show. In Hollywood, uh, we do a show at the Comedy Store. It's Canada Birthday Show. And what it is, it's I, I got this idea five or six years ago to get so much Canadian talent. That's the guys Let's do a Canada birthday show. And we've had Russell Peters does it, Jeremy Hotz does it, Tom Green, Harlan Williams, uh, Lachlan Patterson, Ian Bag. These are, you know these are all Canadian. So far, I belong with all those names. So you I'm really you don't. Oh, but, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> no, but what I'm going to say, and I told Rick, I said the I saw you tonight, well, and since we're here now, man, it's open invitation for you. Yeah. I'd like you to come and do it. And I always put I always put uh, seasoned veterans on the show. But I also believe in the spirit of being Canadian. And I we always give a couple of spots to up-and-comers. And it's a good place for you to showcase your talent in Hollywood. So if you do happen to talk to people, the hardest part, and Noel will attest to this, for most comedians in L.A. or New York is stage time. Oh, yeah. but, but the answer is yes. Thank you. So no, no, great. Yeah. I want you to. And you know what? I, it's always sold out. And we get a lot of industry people now coming. We had Jeff Ross jump on stage, Jim Jeffries, you know, honorary Canadians, all those guys, because I'm buddies with them. Good show tonight. Cheers, guys. Appreciate Cheers. It. It's so much yeah. fun tonight. Good set, guys. Good set. Good, Good show. Set. Good fun night uh, tonight. Yeah. By the way, for the record, you have the best fucking condos in the business. Thanks. Arizona man. and Edmonton. I seriously, know. you wouldn't know. All right? Just go look in the mirror. You'll feel better about yourself. <laughs> Uh, folks, as always, you guys are just the absolute best. We love performing for you here in Edmonton. Put it together one more time for Mr. Angelo Tsaroukas, Noel L. Grabley, Brett Forte. I'm Rick Bronson. Thanks for laughing. See you soon, friends.